Good morning, everyone. It's so wonderful to see you. I am at the University of Cincinnati with my great friend, Chris, and I cannot wait to introduce you to him. <clears throat> but first, we have to sing our hello song. Are you ready? Children, children, hello, children. How are you today? Children, children, hello, children. Come, let's sing and play. Children, children, Hello, children, how are you today? Children, children, hello, children, come, let's sing and play. Well, I have an amazing instrument, instruments to introduce you to today. And I can't wait to introduce you to my friend, Chris. Chris, where did you go? I lost you. I can, oh, here he is. <laughs> This how are is, you? I'm great. How are you? I'm wonderful. It's so good to see you. And what in the world? This isn't a guitar. It looks like a guitar. Kind of like a guitar. This is called a lute. A lute. Yes. And this was a uh, very important instrument many hundreds of years ago. Oh. Uh, and it kind of went out of fashion for a little while. And now there are more people who are playing this instrument. So would you say the lute was played during the Renaissance? Oh, it was definitely played during the Renaissance. It was actually, it was, we the really the most important instrument in the Renaissance. Uh, and we know this because there is more music written for this instrument than for all of the other instruments combined. Oh, wow. So there's just tons and tons of, of music for of this. Of lute music. Of lute music, yes. <laughs> It sounds like the flute, but it doesn't it sounds, look much like the flute. Yes, but it has no F at the beginning. No. It is a lute. Does it sound like the flute? Uh, not very much. Well, let's hear it. Really beautiful sound. Okay. It's kind of peaceful, I think, don't you? Um, your lute has a lot of strings on it. Uh, How many yes. strings does it have? So it has 11 strings on this. Oh, wow. But I'm not actually playing uh, 11 different strings. Uh, most of the strings are the same note. So I've got two strings that are tuned to this note. And that is totally just to give sort of a sound. If I just play one string, I kind of have this sound. If I play them both, I get it gives it more of that kind of sound. Yeah, it's a little bit more interesting to listen to that way, I think. That's so cool. So 11 strings, and there's a really pretty design there. Why? Mm -hmm. I've seen guitars have holes like that, too. Why do they do right, that? Right. Um, well, this is called the rose, just oh. like a flower. Um, and it actually... Um, I'm not sure why they do that design. Uh, it, I think it's just for the look of it. Um, and um, it, it's something that comes way from, from long ago from a place called, from some places of the earth called the Middle East. Ooh, oh, wow, yeah. okay. That's interesting. But um, maybe it, the guitars have a big hole right there too. Is right. there a reason to have a hole there? Um, well, the hole just allows air to come in and out of the instrument, and that's how we get the sound. Oh, so the sound is louder. So yes. if we didn't have yeah, the if we didn't have that, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make much sound at huh, all. I see. And this, it might not look like it has holes, but there are tiny little holes in there. <laughs> um, and once upon a time, the guitar would have had the same sort of thing. Oh, interesting. Um, and we don't do it uh, nowadays on, on modern guitars. No. I see you have a, a few different instruments here. Can, I do. Can we talk about what those are? Sure. So this, of course, is the lute. Um, and it's kind of related to... A guitar. Oh, I've seen that one before. <laughs> seen the guitar, you've probably seen the guitar before. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you can see they're, uh, they're different shape, um, and uh, there are a different number of strings. So yes, 11 strings on here, mm -hmm. and there are only six strings on a guitar. Oh, wow. And so... Uh, but you can we'll, still play the same number of notes. You can still play the same notes, you know. So yeah, this has this just different sound. A lot of strumming. <laughs> Cool. You can do that on a loop too, but it's just a different sound. You know, we have different, different kind of sounds for the strings. And, and what about this one here? This has a yeah. lot of strings. I'm trying to count yes. them. I can't count that high. Well, here if I, I compare these two side by side. So uh, this was the lute, an earlier lute, and this was in the time period that we call the Renaissance. Uh, this is the same instrument. Uh, but it's from a time period called the Baroque. Oh, it's right. a lot bigger. Yes. 
So the lute was actually around and used for many centuries, all the way from uh, the medieval times up until um, uh, what we call the Romantic times, really. So you're talking about uh, times of you know, King, Ar King Arthur and, and Merlin and, and dragons guys, and dragons, yes, yes. <laughs> when dragons walk the earth, uh, all the way up to uh, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin. Oh wow! So uh, this instrument was still around. So as it uh, as it was around, you know, this is kind of the early version. Uh, people just kept adding strings and strings and strings <laughs> until they get to this sort of thing. It almost looks yeah. like two loops just yeah. squished <laughs> together. <laughs> almost, yeah, it's bigger. So this is kind of like baby shark, and this is uh, this is kind of like daddy shark. Yeah. There we go. Can can we hear what this big one sounds sure, like? Yeah. So uh, this works a little differently. So I'm I'm pressing some of the the strings down with this hand and plucking it with this hand. So okay. get, get my notes this way. So that works for some of these strings you can see here, but then there are always these strings that are just out here. I can't press anything down. If I try to press anything down, they're just kind of out here. I'll just get yeah, too high. Very good, right? So uh, these strings I'm just playing just with this thumb right here. <laughs> Uh, notes that this other uh, loop doesn't have. Really low notes. Right. right. Oh, that's interesting. They're almost like piano, way down on the piano. He plays a piece of music on that one. Sure. You know what it sounds like? fuller sort of sound. Yeah. Well, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about how the lute might have been used way back 500 years during the Renaissance. Right. So, uh, as I mentioned, it was the most popular instrument, uh, which was a big deal because back during those days there was no electricity, there were no computers, no one was streaming music or listening to the radio. And so if you wanted to have any kind of music, you had to either hire somebody or you had to play it yourself. Oh. <laughs> and so this was a great instrument. Uh, it's a small sort of instrument. People could play all sorts of things. Uh, and so people would play it at home. Uh, they'd play just maybe solo lute music or play with other instruments, maybe with somebody singing. Um, and it was used, yeah, just all around uh, and all the way up into the royal court. <gasps> you would have royal lutenists who uh, their entire life, they would just, just play lute music for the king or queen. So they would play for the king and queen? Oh, sure. Oh my goodness. Now, when you saw the king and queen, you had to do something very special, right? Sure. You yeah. couldn't just go up and say hi. You had to do a special movement called a bow, if you're a person who wears pants like this. Or if you're wearing a dress, you would do a curtsy, and that's kind of trickier because you put one foot behind and come out like this and go way down. So I wonder at home, maybe we could practice our bows and curtsies while Chris plays some music that maybe a king or queen might have might have listened to. Sure. Can we try that? Okay, I'll do both the bows and the curtsies. Here we go. <laughs> or something but then they everybody had to know how to bow for the king and queen <laughs> that's right yeah. all right so there's one more thing i wanted to ask you about i've heard a really weird word about the renaissance a word called a a troubadour and i think it was a job could you tell me about 
A troubadour? Sure. Well, troubadours were people who, uh, they made their living basically going from town to town making music. Uh, nowadays, we, we have this still. We have uh, bands and artists who come around and give concerts oh, yeah. and uh, they do that sort of thing. But these people, yes, they did this uh, uh, full-time professionally and they would also uh, write poetry and sing songs. And, <laughs> um, pretty much like a modern rock star who comes in and, and uh, uh, wow. Gives a concert. Do you think they signed autographs? <laughs> they might have. And people took sure. selfies with them. <laughs> Probably not selfies because they didn't invent phones yet. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long, long time ago. But when they played, they couldn't just sit down and play somewhere. They they were walking around oh, the sure. town. They were wandering they? around a lot, so people would would, would oh. hear them. And, Again, uh, there was no way to listen to music unless someone was actually making it live. So. Right, and so people might follow them around town. <gasps> sure. Can we play follow the leader? We could do that. Okay, sure. so I think Chris is going to play some music and we're all gonna follow, I know you're at home, but we'll pretend. We're gonna stand up and follow and do all the different things that he does. We can pretend to play the lute and if he does anything weird with his feet, we'll do that too. <laughs> Great, I'm gonna go get a snack. Okay. Oh no! <laughs> All right, here we go. guitar and lute players at our concert um, coming up this fall. I'm so glad you could join us. I'm so glad you invited me into no your problem. really neat studio. Yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Bye.